Hey, hey, Queen City Gaming fans. Welcome back, folks. So, guys, today we are doing a Drop Zone Commander Faction Deep Dive. This is a new series we're going to be doing looking at the various forces of the uh, Drop Zone Commander universe. And I figured we might as well start off with one of the factions from the starter set. So today, guys, we are looking into the UCM, specifically their command options, what they bring to the table, how cool the models are, and what can you add to your forces. Alrighty, guys, so let's dive on in. So folks, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe down below for some awesome uh, Drop Zone content, and make sure you stick around for some giveaways we've got coming up here in the future. But to start off, guys, we have the Wolf Command Lab. This is the commander that comes in the two-player starter set, as well as the Army Faction starter set for UCM. It's a resin model. It's fantastic. It's a good starter with some good benefits between its fast movement, as well as its direct and indirect attacks, which is perfect for any starting commander. After that, we have the Kodiak Command AVC, which is like your troop transport, but a massive satellite on the back that rains hell from the uh, sky onto its enemies on the tabletop. Then we have the Ferrum Drone Base, which is probably one of my favorite models from the Drop Zone universe, and has been a tried and true commander for a lot of UCM generals here since the game even started. After that, we have the Phoenix Command Gunship, which is really unique because it's a gunship, and it provides some awesome benefits and some really fast moving command options for your UCM. So let's look at individual profiles and see which one best fits you and your playstyle. So when we talk about commanders, we might as well talk about the first one that most players are going to start with. And that's the Wolf Command Lab. This is the unit that comes in the starter box and the army box, and it's that little small resin guy you get in there. Now, he is the perfect commander starting out for UCM players. He's 60 points, so he's not that expensive. If you lose him, it's not like you're losing a huge chunk of your army. Uh, squad size, just one. There's only one of him in the unit, and he takes up two spots in his transport ship. So now this guy will have a 9-inch move, so he doesn't fly down the tabletop, but, you know, he goes at his pretty steady pace. He has active countermeasures and, army, or, and armor of 12, which isn't bad, but isn't fantastic. Damage 3, which is pretty average, and he is the tank type. Now, where he is kind of different is his weapons. So he has one weapon that has two different profiles. That's why it has Alt-1 in the special section. So the AP multi-missiles, move and fire blank, front arc, 12-inch full, 8-inch countered, which isn't that great. One shot, accuracy of 2 with an energy of 8. Now, where I really like this weapon it is it has a strafe 3 profile. So it is penetrative as well, so on a 6 you are automatically damaging your opponent. But with strafe 3, that shot of 1 actually becomes 3. So you get 3 shots, but each shot must be within 3 inches of the one before it. So you can either choose 3 different units in a, like a group of tanks that are all right next to each other, or hit the same target 3 times, which is super cool. He also has an AA multi-missile, which is pretty much the same profile. It gets three shots, four for its accuracy, energy seven uh, with AA zero and indirect. So he does have a way of fighting enemy aircraft, but it is an indirect weapon. So you can use your scouts to draw a line of sight to that aircraft for him. It's a cool little way of doing it, but at a full range of 12 and a counter of eight, it's not gonna go that far. <laughs> So you kind of have to be careful of his ranges. Overall, he's a good starting commander. Is he the best in the game? No. Is he the worst in the game? Probably not. But overall, he's going to be something for you to learn your basic rules with and to get a feel for the game with. Now, he'll be great in smaller games because of his smaller point cost and he can move up the table and hide really well with him being just one like smaller unit. So... Super good little commander to have, and I would definitely make sure you have one in the collection and make sure you give him a try. Now, he will kind of fall short from some of the other abilities some of our other commanders have, but overall, decent little unit. You're going to see him on the table, especially with him being in the starter set. So let me know down below what you think of the Wolf Command Lab, especially with him being in the starter. So now, probably the most OG like unit in the game that's been around for a long time is the uh, the Kodiak. So this model is going to look really similar for the people out there who have recognized it. It's basically an APC pulling a trailer, trailer, but it makes it the Kodiak Command ACV. Now, this guy has been in the game for a while. He did kind of get like a little kit upgrade with another option to it. Um, 
in the past little bit, but overall, he's still been a really good commander, especially when you're starting out. For 125 points, you can't really go wrong with this guy, especially for his survivability. And I know a lot of you are looking at his stats, and you're like, oh, no, he's not that survivable, but he actually is. So starting off, he has a movement of four, so he doesn't move that fast. Active countermeasures, armor of 14, which is great. Damage of four, great. He can take some hits. He is a tank type. Now, here's where his survivability is. He has an orbital strike weapon, moving fire of zero. So when you move on the table, you can't fire this thing. But he has a full front side rear arc, infinite range full, infinite range countered. So this guy can sit behind a building the entire game, well out of enemy's way, giving you command buffs, like extra cards and everything, and just firing this every turn. It's fantastic. One shot, accuracy of a 3+, plus, energy 13, area, devastator 2, scenery with indirect. So you are going to rely on the scout units in your army really heavily with this guy to get your line of fire. But overall, he's just going to be a terror on the battlefield, raining death from the skies while giving you command bonuses. But the real weakness with this unit is going to be your scout units. You're going to rely on your scouts to really extend your command range out and to be used for your line of sight with that indirect keyword. So he's a super cool unit to use. He is a little niche in the way you play him. But I think you're going to see a lot of UCM players kind of move towards him later on. He is a lot more survivable, and this guy, you know, you're going to have to hunt him down, and he's probably going to be in a weird spot of the table, which, you know, increases his survivability. But overall, he's a fantastic unit to add to any of your UCM forces. So now, guys, we get into probably my favorite unit from the UCM, especially in the command slot. This is the big boy himself, the Ferrum Drone Base. So now it's 155 points. It does have a command or a squad size of one at the start, and it takes 18 capacity to transport this thing. So this guy is no joke. It's a huge model, super cool. Now he moves three inches a turn, which is laughable. Uh, but he has active countermeasures and armor of 12. Damage of 5, he is a tank, and he is a uh, special large. <laughs> so uh, take that with you will. Now, guys, I do really like this model. He's really cool. He's interactable. He has, like, a drone bridge that goes up and down, and the deck that the drones launch off of actually, like, flips over. So it's a super cool little model, and it's a model that was around, like, towards the start of the game, so it survived really well. So let's look into this. It does have a um, point defense system. So it has front side rear facing, 36 inch full, 9 inch countered, which is a huge drop down. Two shots, accuracy of three, energy six, not that great. AA2 penetrative. So really not that bad of an anti-air gun. And that's probably the thing that's going to get to these ferrum bases the most is the uh, enemy air units. It also has two twin Gatling guns, which are front side, one on the right, one on the left. 24 inch range for full, 12 inch countered, four shots, four accuracy, energy three. So they'll take out some infantry. But uh, overall, this isn't where this unit shines. It's not in its weapons, it's actually in the drone base. So every turn, this model can launch four Star Sprite drones. They disembark just like any other unit, and they form a unit by themselves. Now, a UCM player may not have more than two units of these drones per base. So if you have two bases, then you could have potentially four units on the table. But these guys are super interesting because they don't count for kill points. But they're super annoying to deal with because they move 30 inches, so they just fly across the table. They have active countermeasures and an armor of eight, so they die to a stiff breeze with damage of one and aircraft small, but they work really, really well together. So they have a rule called Golden Arrow, and it's their, um, not really a rule, it's their weapon. So move and fire 15 inches, arc front, range 24 full, 6 inches countered, so you kind of be up close and personal with the opponent to shoot them. <laughs> one shot each, accuracy 3, energy 6. 
they have AA2 and Focus 3, which is really cool. So you can focus your shots to increase your energy rating to make a stronger attack against um, more heavily armored aircraft, which is a great rule for them. The sprites themselves can be really great for board control, especially with their fast movement. They can move up and block lanes from enemies, and they can really just be annoying, to be honest with you. Um, especially because of the fact that they do have self-destruct. So you think, oh, I'll just drop them down to one, and then they'll just be annoying, and then he can't make more. No. So if the unit, at any point, you can just decide, hey, they're just going to self-destruct, and you just remove the unit from the table, and then you can bring another unit back in, which is a super cool ability for this guy, and I do love this unit because of what he brings to the table with the ability to make these um, sprites that just go out and just harass the enemy, which is fantastic, and I absolutely adore it. So guys, um, yeah, definitely check out the Ferrum drone base. Super cool model, super cool rules, and really different than the other commanders we've seen so far. Now, with him only having a move of three, he will be sitting in the back and really relying on your scouts to give out orders. That's something that we've seen a lot with the UCM so far, is that they're going to rely on those scout moves and those scout units to really push their command radius out to be able to issue... Um, cards and things like that, which isn't a bad thing because they do have Wolverines who are actually a really good um, scout choice. But overall, scouts are going to be super important to get the maximum out of your command within a UCM army. But let's look at a unit that really probably won't rely on scouts at all next. Alrighty guys, so our last commander we're going to talk about is the Phoenix Command Vehicle. This one's kind of unique. It is an aircraft. So it has an armor of 10 damage, or uh, 9 like damage points, active countermeasures, and moves 16 inches a turn. So this thing can fly up the table. But it's no joke, guys. So for its weapons, it has a missile battery with a move and fire of 4 inches. So you have to be careful of that. Front arc, 36 inch full range, which is awesome. All right. 9 inch countered, 1 shot, 3 uh, plus accuracy, and an energy of 10, which is great for taking out vehicles. Also, it's an area weapon, so it's really going to help you take out like large units of rocket technicals for the resistance, but it is limited too, so you can only fire it twice during the game. So make sure you remember that and use your shots wisely. It has uh, two minigun triads, one on left, one on right. Both can fire on front, 36 uh, full range, 12 inch countered, three shots each, but they have focus three, so you can get that energy up higher to help damage vehicles and an accuracy of two plus. Hopefully you're going to get some uh, multiple shots in on the enemy. It has an AA battery, so 8-inch range. Front side, rear, 36-inch full, 9-inch countered. Two shots, 3 accuracy, 6 energy with AA2. So overall, guys, this isn't a, just a commander that's going to be there for you to use command cards. This is a commander that's going to be there to beat face in. <laughs> with the missile battery and the rocket triads and the AA threat, this thing is an all-around unit that's going to do some damage to your opponent while keeping itself alive because, if you look down below, it has a self-repair ability. So when this unit is destroyed, instead of exploding, it lands on the closest available spot. If it is un, it is untargetable for the rest of the round. In the roundup phase, roll a dice on a one to three, it's destroyed. On a four to five, it's replenished, or it replenishes two damage points, and on a six, it replenishes three damage points. This thing is super tough to take out. He's going to be there for you. And he has the ability to come back from the dead. How cool is that? So overall, guys, this is probably one of my favorite commanders for UCM. And it's just going to be a nightmare on the table for its survivability. And with it being a flyer, it can zoom around and give you those command radiuses. You oh, give you the command radiuses you need to play cards and to make moves effectively. So, super cool little ability, and it doesn't require a dropship, so it's actually cheaper than taking a Ferrum base, which requires a dropship, or it has to just drive onto the table. So, super cool little ability, super cool little unit. So guys, do me a favor, tell me what you think in the comments down below. Let me know which one's your favorite, which one's your least favorite, and which one do you think you're going to see on the table that most. I do want to thank you for joining me here at Queen City Gaming, folks. Thank you for stopping by for our Drop Zone Commander content. Make sure you stick around for some more Conquest, The Last Dragon of Kings, Age of Signor, Drop Zone, and Drop Fleet Commander. Have a fantastic day, folks. Queen City Gaming, signing out.